boys and girls, welcome back to Kid Avenue Online. Have you ever been a cruise ship before? Maybe you have. They fit thousands of people. But imagine being on a boat just for one. Not one that would fit you and me, but one that was built for a baby. And today we're going to learn about a very special boat that was built for a very special baby. But before we do that, let's open in a word of prayer and let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we give you thanks for this time that we be here together with you. I pray you please bless this time that we have. May the hearts of these boys and girls be open to your word. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. All right, get your Bibles ready. Get your hearts ready. We're going to have our song service, then our lesson, and you know what time it is. It's time for Ship Ahoy. Hey, boys and girls, happy Sunday. We have a new song for you guys to learn this morning. It's called, How Did Moses Cross the Red Sea? I just learned it myself, and I hope you guys will enjoy it too. So here we go. We're going to sing it twice. How did Moses cross the Red Sea? How did Moses cross the Red Sea? How did Moses cross the Red Sea? How did he get across? Did he swim? No, no. Did he sail? No, no. Did he fly? No, 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 no. Did he walk? No, no. Did he run? No, no. How did he get across? God blew with his wind. Puff, 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 puff. He blew just enough, 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 enough. Path. That's how he got across. You guys got it? Let's try it one more time. Here we go. How did Moses cross the Red Sea? How did Moses cross the Red Sea? How did Moses cross the Red Sea? How did he get across? Did he swim? No, no. Did he sail? No, no. Did he fly? No, 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 no. Did he walk? No, no. Did he run? No, no. How did he get across? God blew with his wind. Puff, 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 puff. He blew just enough, 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 enough. And through the sea, God made a path. That's how he got across. God made a path, that's how he got across. Great singing, boys and girls. Hope you enjoyed that. Hey, mates. Welcome back to another week of Kid Avenue as we go along our series, Ship Ahoy. I hope you've been enjoying this time as we cruise along God's Word and learn more about His truths. So if you have your Bibles, I hope you all do. Let's turn to Exodus chapter 2. Exodus chapter 2. So last week, we learned about Noah's Ark, right? So this week, we're actually going to be learning about another Ark. You might not have heard it referred to as an Ark, but we'll see whose Ark it is this week. So if you turn to Exodus chapter 2, let's start reading at verse 1. It says, And there went a man of the house of Levi, and took to wife a daughter of Levi. And the woman conceived and bare a son, and when she saw him, that he was a goodly child, she hid him three months. And when she could not longer hide him, she took for him an ark of bulrushes, and daubed it with slime and with pitch, and put the child therein. And she laid it in the flags by the river's brink. And his sister stood afar off, to wit what would be done to him. And the daughter of Pharaoh came down to wash herself at the river, and her maidens walked along by the river's side, and when she saw the ark among the flags, she sent her maid to fetch it. And when she had opened it, she saw the child, and behold, the babe wept. And she had compassion on him and said, This is one of the Hebrews' children. Then said his sister to Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and call to thee a nurse of the Hebrew woman, that she may nurse the child for thee? And Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Go. And the maid went and called the child's mother. So in this story, we're going to be learning about Moses and the Ark. You might not have heard it like that before, but we are going to learn about how Moses was protected by God and how he was used by God so greatly. So here, we're sailing along in the country of Egypt. 
how many of you know which continent Egypt is in? If you said Africa, you are correct. So here we're in Egypt and we learn about a character, a pharaoh. So if you look at chapter 1, verse 22, we learn about Pharaoh. And this Pharaoh the, is the king of Egypt. And this Pharaoh is not like any other. He was scared of the people of Israel, God's people. He saw that they were multiplying and that they were expanding. And he got really worried that they would team up with his enemies and try to overtake him. So he commanded something in chapter 1, verse 22, the verse right before chapter 2. It says, And Pharaoh charged all his people, saying, Every son that is born ye shall cast into the river, and every daughter ye shall save alive. So here we're, we see that Pharaoh was so scared of the, of the children of Israel growing that he said, hey, from now on, if any boys are born, just toss them into the river so that they won't, they won't continue to multiply. So imagine if you were born during this time and you were a boy, you would have been chucked out all the way into the river, left by yourself, and no one would save you, right? You were just left to die. So that's the time that we're living in right now. So here we see that a woman in verse 2, so chapter 2, verse 2, it says, The woman conceived and bare a son. And we know what's supposed to happen, right? So this son should have been chucked. It says, and when she saw him, that he was a goodly child, she hid him three months. So even though he, this little baby was supposed to have gone into the river, this mother was hiding him until she no longer could. So in verse 3, it says, she could no longer hide him. When she could not longer hide him, she took for him an ark of bulrushes. So what is this Ark of Bulrushes, right? So in Egypt, they have a plant. It's called a bulrush. It's almost like a reed. It's a water-based plant. It grows straight out of the water and it's strong enough to make something like a basket. So if you Google online, you'll probably find something like this. So this kind, of a, this kind of a plant is actually used to weave baskets, um, to make even things like boats and arcs that people use for fishing and things like that. So here, she, this, this mother took this ark of bulrushes and it says it daubed it with slime and with pitch. That sounds really gross, right? But what she was doing was she was making this little basket, if you can say, this little ark. She was making it waterproof for her next plan. So she daubed it with slime and pitch and she put the child therein and she laid it in the flags by the river's brink. So she took this, this mother was so worried that this child would be thrown out into the river that she made this little ark for him, a waterproof ark. And she put this little baby in and put it at the brink of the river to try to protect him, to try to save him. And what do you know? It says in verse 5, the daughter of Pharaoh. Yes, the very same Pharaoh that's trying to kill all the babies, his daughter is the one that found this little baby. She saw the ark from far away, right? She saw the ark among the flags and she asked her maids to go and fetch it. So when she saw, when she saw this ark, she opened it and it says that she said, this is one of the Hebrews' children. So in verse 6, she noticed that this was a Hebrews' children. So take a note of that. This little baby who was in this ark was easily identified as a Hebrew's children. She knew he wasn't an Egyptian child, but she had compassion on him. Can you imagine? This is the same daughter of the man who's trying to kill all the babies. She knows that this baby is one of the ones that should have been killed. But instead, she decides to have compassion and to take him in. And what, what gets even better is that the baby's sister saw this, ran up to her and asked her, Hey, do you need someone to take care of this baby? And she said, Yeah. So the sister finds her mom, same mom, right? And brings her to Pharaoh's daughter. And the mom is the one taking care of his, her own son. So she gets paid for taking care of her son. What a great story. Look at how God protected this little baby and used this situation. And you know what? In our lives, in our lives, God will protect us. 
So we're not in physical danger right now, right? So we're not physically in danger, but we are spiritually in danger. So we might not be threatened to, to die, but people are after the Christians. Do people even know that you're a Christian? Here it says that Pharaoh, once, once Pharaoh's daughter looked at this baby, she knew immediately that it was a Hebrews' child. You know, when you, when you go out with your friends, when people look at you, when your family look at you, do they know that you're a Christian? Do they associate you with the Lord? Or do you just look like any other Egyptian out there? You know, God protects you, right? God's going to protect the Christians. So even though you might be scared of getting made fun of, you might be scared of getting persecuted or, or called names, God's going to protect you. You know, God is looking out for you because he has a plan for you. You know, Moses, he ended up going to do great things. He ended up doing very great things for the Lord. If you don't know, he led the people of God out of Egypt out of slavery through the 10 plagues, which you've probably heard of, right? God used Moses to lead his people out. God used Moses to part the Red Sea and take his people across the Red Sea. God, God used Moses to lead them through the wilderness where he wrote the 10 commandments that we know so well, right? God ended up using Moses for a lot of things because because God, because Moses stood up for what's right. Once Moses knew, you know, Moses identified himself as a Hebrew. And once he, once he grew up and he um, learned, learned God's word, he knew that his people were in trouble, that God's people were in trouble. And he decided to stand up, stand up against Pharaoh, you know, take, take what the Lord has taught him and what the Lord gave him and lead his people out. And you know what, boys and girls, if you're a Christian, you should act like one. You should stand up for the Lord during this time. You know, in this time where people are, are ridiculing, meaning when they're making fun of Christians and they're, they're talking bad about the church and they're closing everything down and closing out the churches, this is the time where you stand up and you should be the one telling them that you're a Christian. You know, how are you standing up for the Lord? Are you ashamed to be identified with the Lord? Do people know, you know, this is a Hebrews children child Hebrews' children. Do people know that you are a child of God? Or are you ashamed? Do you just act like everyone else out there? Are you trying to be popular? Are you trying to just fit in with the rest of your classmates, with the rest of your friends, with your relatives, your cousins, whoever the case is? Or are you standing up? Are you standing up for the Lord and for what's right? You know, when you go to school, when you go to activities, you're always going to be pressured to do something that you know you shouldn't be doing, right? But you need to remember the, the words of the Lord and you need to stand up for it. You know, God's going to protect you the same way he protected Moses with this little ark, right? God's going to shield you. He's not gonna let any harm happen to you, but things will happen. And God says, you know, He'll take you through it. And he wants to do great things through you, but you have to stand up for him. God will protect you, but what are you doing? What are you doing with the word of the Lord? What are you doing with prayer? Are you praying? Are you ashamed to pray for your food in front of other people? Do you pray at school if you are going back to school? Do you pray for your meals? That's just a small prayer. Right, just a short little prayer. Or are you too ashamed? Do you just kind of roll your eyes, dear Lord, thank you for the food in Jesus' name, amen. You know, or are you really going out there and letting people know that you're a Christian, telling them about the Lord, inviting them to church? You know, this isn't the time to be ashamed of the Lord, but this is a great time for you to get into God's word, to learn his truths, and to go out there and tell others also. So with that, why don't we go ahead, bow our heads, and why don't we pray? Dear Lord, thank you for this day you've given to us. And God, we're just so thankful for your word and for how you protected Moses in this little ark of bulrushes. And God, in the same way, I pray that you just continue to protect us, to help us to do more for you 
And God, as we go out um, into the world, into the schools, into our family parties, or wherever we go, I pray that you just help us to not be ashamed of you and to tell others about you. I pray that you just help us to stand up for what's right and to do what's right um, with all the days of our life. Use us, use us for your glory. We pray and commit everything to your hands, Lord. In Jesus' name we all say, Amen. So if you have your Bibles, why don't we turn to our memory verse today in Psalms chapter 37, verse 3. Psalm chapter 37, verse 5. 5. <laughs> I was just testing you. So Psalm chapter 37, verse 5. It says, Commit thy way unto the Lord, trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. Why don't we say it one more time together? If you're in your house, say it with me. Say, commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. Why don't you keep this verse in your heart? Memorize it. Really commit it to memory. Because it says here, if you commit your ways to the Lord, if you stand up for him, if you do... Um, if you, if you desire to serve him and do what's right, he will give you the desires of your heart. So let's go into our review questions. Let's see how well you're paying attention. Question number one. What did God use to hide baby Moses? What did God use to hide baby Moses? If you said a boat, great. If you said an ark, great. If you said the ark of bulrushes, even better, good job. That's correct. He used a little ark, right? A little boat, a little basket even to, to protect, to hide and protect little baby Moses. Question number two. Question number two. Who found Moses in the ark? Who found Moses in the ark? If you said Pharaoh's daughter, that is correct. Pharaoh's daughter, the same daughter of the man that was trying to kill all the boys in Israel, in Egypt. So question number three. There's a lot of different answers you can do for this one. Question number three. How did God use Moses? How did God use Moses? There's actually quite a bit of answers. So if you were listening, if you said anything like saving them out of Egypt, through the 10 plagues, leading them through the wilderness, parting the Red Sea, taking his people through the Red Sea, writing the 10 commandments, or maybe even one that I didn't even list out. Good for you. Great job and thank you for listening.